G'day folks, Stephen Barker here from Vintage Restorations Australia. In this episode I put a new radiator in the Series 1 and also finish a few little jobs that needed doing. So the aim of today is to swap out this radiator, oops that's a bit hot still, um, for a actual 2A one. When this motor was put in, I'm not sure what this radiator is, I think it's some small literage Japanese thing. Um, anyway, it, the car's fine, it runs fine, but on a hot day when you're lugging up a hill it does get a little bit warmer than I like, um, so I'm going to swap it out and put a Land Rover radiator back in it. Um, obviously this fan's been put in to compensate for the small radiator. There's no cowling there, so um, I'm going to try and fit uh, the radiator with a cowling and probably go back to the original fan so it uh, draws air through. Um, anyway, that's the aim of the project. I guess the first step is to, well, let it cool down. So I'll put the kettle on, have a cup of tea while that cools down. Then I'll dump the fluid and uh, get that out. So... We've got a uh, radiator there. I don't want to inflame the Brit part, shit part um, argument, but um, this is Brit part. It was $420 delivered from Land Rover Spares. It's a copper core um, radiator, so not an alloy radiator. You know, a lot of people hate Brit part, but this comes with a 24 month guarantee, so I'm kind of happy with that. You've got to consider the budget of keeping these things on the road. I'd rather have a car rolling down the road with. Uh, well, not questionable parts, but cheaper parts than a car sitting in the shed full of uh, expensive parts. Um, I want to get these done, and if I buy premium parts, I can't get them done, can't get them back on the road. So that's how I kind of justify using Britpart. As I said, it's got a 24-month guarantee for that radiator, so it is what it is. Oh, well, here we are. I'm going to subject you to an unboxing video. <laughs> I guess the first thing I should do is check I've got a cap that fits it. Yes. Obviously we're fitting a uh, 2A3 radiator into a Series 1, so it's not going to fit exactly. Um, so I'm going to take all these old brackets and stuff off, clear all this out, get a clean slate to start again. A mess down here where I've uh, where the overflow is gone. Taking the corrosion on the inside and put it on the outside. So while I'm busy in here removing old brackets and stuff from the previous um, adaptions, uh, there's a few adaptions down here. This is a a fixing for previous steering damper. This one attaches up here onto a bracket. I've had to remove that to remove a bracket inside. So while I've got it out, I'll cut this off and uh, cut all this stuff off and just give it a bit of tannic treatment to prevent corrosion. And uh, that's another dodgy old repair gone. While I'm doing cleanups, I'm going to remove this old air 
filter uh, that was on there when we got it. it used to be, uh, I think it's off a holding or something that was supplying into there. But we've got that boy racer one. Eventually, we'll put a put a proper oil bath back into it. But anyway, for now, just get rid of that. We've had a look at the radiator, and to get a uh, 2A radiator in here, this piece of metal is in the way. These holes actually align, and this might be in the way, but we'll get this out, and I'm going to bend that that way so that becomes a side mount, and we'll have a look at where that is. Um, but first thing, get this out. <laughs> this off to get inside put the bolts in for the radiator. There you go. Thousand dollars in England. There's another 200 quid. All right. It's just a bit of access. So the radiator's in there. It's just sitting there at the moment. I'm just going to try and see if I can fit a cowl in there because I, the cowl will pull the air through a bit better. Uh, I've managed to salvage one. It's not the best one in the world, but it, uh, it'll clean up. I'll give that a quick clean up and see if we can get that fitted just to get that drawing a bit better. Thing just needs a little bit of panel beading and patching and rust treatment. Our rust converter. as they say in New Zealand brew. While I wait for that tannic to go off before I paint, I'll turn my attention to eating the biscuits. Cowling all fitted. I fill it with the original screws back into there. There's, uh, I don't know, five screws aside or something. So I put those in. Um, I might stick with that fan. I think it, it's a nice big fan and it'll pull a lot of air through. So I might just stick with that fan, see how it goes. Um, I haven't got a replacement fan, so that's as good as the one I've got. Um, anyway, there's the radiator in. We've got a few other jobs to uh, do. I'm back home now. Got my buddy Ben here today. Say hello to YouTube, Ben. Hello, YouTube. So while we were crawling around under here looking yesterday, we realised this has snapped off. So that's the first little job for today. Knock that out, put a new E in. First things first, a word from our not sponsor, WD-40. We need to give this a bit of a spray. Not our sponsor. So there's the culprit, it's uh, snapped off there, as you can see it was stuck in there, that took a lot of getting out I've got to say, so it was solidly rusted into that, but um, we used enough bad language and managed to get it out, um, oh and some WD-40, I've just got to duck into town and get some bolts so we can get these swing thing, what you call it's back on. Just grease up that, just put this big, big old finger full in the hole. Bang that through the top one. Better put one of those on, eh? <laughs> yeah. Put the best face in. Best face in? Yeah. I love lying under it, guys. Lefty loosey, righty tidy. It's all good. We're done. Just 
So we've got the old number plate light. Um, this I put on just a temporary fix to get it through Rego. As uh, we discussed, this is a running project, so I just wanted to get it on the road. Now that it's on the road, I've ordered one of these from the UK, and through the miracle of YouTube, here it is. Um, so Ben's gonna get that one on. Just looks a bit more genuine. <laughs> Going. Look at that. Sports. Looks way better, the old chrome one. While we were going through the red Joe, we got knocked back on this. It didn't work very well, but he said uh, just get another one, get it replaced. Again, we've ordered it, and here it is, a genuine Lucas one. So we'll get that fitted so we've got some high and low beam. So those connectors just unscrew, you can see that's yeah. exactly the same on the back. Oh, yeah. Easy peasy. So there we go, another little job done. Nice new dimmer switch. So anyway, that's a bit of progress, lights fixed and things, but as often happens with the Landy, it's two steps forward, one step back. We've just put in the radiator and done all that stuff and I've suddenly realised it's got a bit of a bladder problem. There's a bit of moisture coming out. If we come round here, we've sprung a leak down here on the water pump. You can see it dripping there. Uh, I either need a new water pump or a seal kit put through it. So I'll go jump on the internet and get that ordered. Well, folks, I think that's a good place to end it for the year with the bonnet up and work to be done and the, uh, the landy leaking water. Uh, it's kind of pretty typical of uh, 2020. Um, as you can see, Barker's all big now. Um, she's uh, getting there. Speaking of getting there, next year's another year. Our next video video will be my New Year's Restolutions, um, so tune in for that. Just like to quickly say thank you to all of our subscribers, the people who have liked, and a huge thank you to our patrons who have um, financially supported the channel this year. Um, we've had a great year. I'd just like to say thank you to those patrons, each and every one of you. Um, I guess that's it, folks. So take care of yourselves. Happy New Year, and we'll see you next year, which is tomorrow. Bye.